If you don't know how to use blending modes in digital painting, you're missing out on a tool that'll help you fix paintings on the fly, make cooler effects, and try new ideas quickly. In this lesson, John Neimeister takes a student's piece and shows how they can make quick changes through blending modes. If you want to see his full critique, along with all the premium lessons from the Digital Fundamentals course, check out proco.com slash digital painting. Hello. In this video, I'll be taking a look at your assignments from the blending modes lesson and giving you some feedback so you can improve on your images using what we've learned about blending modes. This first submission is from Nicole Drews, and it looks like you took your layers assignment and added some color on top of it with blending modes, which is awesome to see. It looks like you also took your edited version and added some color on top of that with blending modes, changing up the color and also adding some magical spell effects. That's looking very cool. I think you've done a really good job with both of these, and I especially like how organized your layers are, and especially that you named all the layers. A bunch of puppies got some good pets because of these assignments, so well done. I think overall these pieces are working quite well, but there's a little bit of muddy colors happening in them that can sometimes result when we render with blending modes, and we often have to take an extra step above and beyond to try and push our colors to be a little bit more lively. The colors that you've put in here are good, I feel like they're harmonizing pretty well, and I love the palette itself, but it feels like there's a little bit too much shading with grey, and also some of the lights on the face are getting so bright that the skin is starting to feel a little bit chalky. This is very easy to fix, and we can make a lot of tweaks just using blending modes. Let's start by taking a quick look at the portrait here. There's some nice variety of colors going on, with some colder tones in the cheek and the neck and some warmer tones around the cheekbones and the jawline, so there's some interesting movement of color happening here, but I think the values are a little bit off, and we can also add some more richness to these colors using blending modes. I want to start with a multiply blending mode, and see if we can bring the values of the light area down a little bit so that we can get a little more richness and saturation. Generally speaking, vibrant color lives in the midtones, so we want to try to keep our painting a little bit compressed and not go all the way to full black or full white. We can use those really extreme values for deep shadows and really intense highlights, but with most organic and natural forms, we want it to live somewhere in the midtones. So by simply pulling down the values of the light areas, we've already brought the skin to feel a little bit more rich and lively. In addition to bringing the light values of the portrait down a little bit, I think some of the darks are getting a little too muddy and a little too close to black, and they're really fighting that feeling of rich, semi-translucent skin that we want to get in these portraits. We have a fairly strong light source coming from the upper right, so some of that light will be going through the skin, bouncing around inside, and then coming back out, which usually we see in shadow areas, terminators, and thin areas of flesh like the ears or your fingers. In this case, one of the main things standing out to me is the nose and the lips, and I think we can get those feeling a little bit more lifelike. If we pull up a lighten layer, I drop that value, and grab something a little brighter, warmer, and more saturated, and by pulling out those really intense black colors, the skin immediately starts to feel a little bit more blush and full of life. This is also very common where the light meets the shadows, so we might see some of this around the jawline as well, and I think you definitely see a bit of it in the fingers. This effect looks really cool and it's very fun to lay down, but that can tempt you to sometimes use too much of it. If you're using this lighten layer trick, try not to just completely blow out your shadows, as it's not going to look very realistic if that's your goal but adding a little bit of these vibrant colors in the shadows is a great way to make your painting feel a little bit more lifelike. Some similar things might happen in other materials in the painting too. For example, bones are usually ever so slightly translucent as well, and you'll often see this same kind of slightly more saturated, warmer tone wherever the lights are meeting the shadows. You could also push some of this effect in your gemstones as well, lightening up some of these shadows and pushing them a little bit more towards their local color. Basically, we're trying to avoid shading things with black, and if we find our paintings getting muddy, 
This lighten layer trick is a great way to help pull them out of the mud. You can also use tricks like this to help emphasize the form of more complicated materials. For example, the way you've painted the fur on her shoulder here, it's very nicely painted. The brush strokes are very nice, the shapes are very nice, uh, the colors as well. But we are losing a bit of the overall round form of this fur sort of wrapping in three-dimensional space around the character in multiple directions. And using blending modes can be a great way to reinforce that after you've painted the really complicated material by hand. So something I might do is start with this lighten layer and do a very similar thing where I just grab my shadow colors, make them ever so slightly brighter and maybe even a little more saturated. And in those light areas, start pushing just a little bit more value. We still have the separation between our light shapes and our shadow shapes, but now the part of the form that's overall facing the light more is a little bit more illuminated. We can also reinforce this by creating a darken layer, which is the opposite of lighten, as you might guess, and do the opposite trick. Just eye drop our light areas, make them ever so slightly darker, and just reel back those values a little bit as they wrap away from the light source. I might also reinforce this even a little bit further with an overlay layer, which allows me to both lighten and darken these forms. So it seems like we've got a bit of a warmer light coming from the upper right and a bit of a colder ambient light in the room. So I might grab a lighter, warmer color and on this overlay layer, ever so slightly bring out some of the lights on the form that's facing the light source. That by itself might be enough, but I also want to see how it looks if I push the shadow sides of the form with this as well. Maybe darkening the values a little bit more, or maybe even just cooling them off a little bit with this colder tone from the ambience in the room. It's pretty subtle, but if we turn these layers off, you can see that the shoulder overall starts to feel a lot more three-dimensional and like it's wrapping around the figure and really reacting to the light source. Rendering complicated forms is always difficult, and sometimes when we get into the weeds of rendering the complexities and the details, we lose that feeling of the overall dimension of the object. Blending modes are a really quick and effective way to get some of that back if you found you've gone too far with your detail rendering. You can see if I apply some of these techniques to the other areas of the fur as well, we can really enforce the dimension and not only get them to feel more 3D, but also add some interesting color variety that makes the light feel more rich and natural. If you haven't watched the lesson this critique is referencing, check it out and try the assignment for yourself. Your second piece here is looking really nice as well. I would recommend some similar feedback on this one, keeping an eye out on those chalky colors in the skin also paying a little more attention to the overall forms of some of these materials, such as the sleeve rotating away from your light source. The main thing I think blending modes can help you with here is the magical spell. It's feeling a little bit chalky, and I think we can reinforce the feeling of light using some blending modes. The reason it's feeling chalky is because it's mostly just moving through value instead of moving through color. For instance, if we're trying to create some kind of fiery gradient, we might start with a kind of intense orange color, and obviously to render any kind of effect, we're gonna need some kind of value shift. So if we just take that orange color and darken it down, take the same orange color and lighten it up, we're getting the value transition here, but the colors just get so muddy in between. So what we want to do instead is shift through a spectrum of colors that also allow us to shift through our spectrum of values. So if we start with our orange, and then as we get darker, also push more towards red. And then as we get lighter, also push more towards yellow. you can see how much more vibrant and full of life that color transition is. And I think that's what your spell effect here is really missing. I've mentioned this trick a few times, but it's absolutely my favorite and I use it in any painting where I have to make any kind of magical effects. 
One of my favorite ways to achieve this is with linear dodge. Typically what I would do is make a new layer set to linear dodge and also set my brush to linear dodge. And then I can start painting in using whatever brush is appropriate for the material I'm going for. As I'm painting, I want to be sure I'm moving through that spectrum of color as I increase in brightness. So I usually like to start with my darkest color and my biggest shape. So if there's some kind of fiery magical spell effect going on here, I can start painting that in with sort of a dark reddish tone. And because my brush is set to linear dodge, it's automatically adding some value and intensity every time I add a new brush stroke on top of this. Using this darker color and focusing on bigger shapes, I can start to lay in the foundation of my magical effect and get it generally looking how I want it to look. But eventually, as I want to start getting brighter with the effect, I also want to start shifting through colors. So once I've got my basic shape blocked in, I might start pushing my color a little more towards orange and a little more bright. And now as I start painting this in, you can see I get a really rich and vibrant color transition going on. And again, because my brush is set to linear dodge, this is automatically pushing my lightest lights even closer towards yellow, which is perfect. For my most intense hotspots, I might even push this even brighter, more towards yellow. And I could potentially get all the way to a pure white, but it's not necessary to do that. It depends on the intensity of the effect and the overall value range of your painting. Now, sometimes this technique can oversaturate things a little bit. Some spells work really well when they're very, very saturated, but I feel like in this case, the overall painting is very desaturated. And while we want our magical effect to be vibrant, this is a little too much in context. So I might pull the saturation down just a little bit so it sits better in the painting. And you can see if I switch between the two, how much more interest and depth and dimension of color is present when we move through that spectrum of color rather than just lightening or darkening our values. Something I would also mention that's a little bit beyond where we're at in the course right now, but I think it's worth mentioning. Anytime you have some kind of magical spell effect that's emitting light, one of the best ways to make it feel more realistic is to be sure that light is affecting things around it. Linear Dodge is a great way to kickstart this process. Since we have this warm orangey light here, it's pretty easy to grab sort of a mid-tone orangey color. And on a layer set to Linear Dodge, I can paint where I think the light from this effect would be hitting. It would definitely strike the palm of the hand, the underside of this hand, and we may even consider switching the light direction for that hand, or seeing if we can pull it out of the key light a little bit. It would likely be hitting the top of the wrist a little bit, a bit of the sleeve. Depending on the intensity of the effect, the light could fade off by the time it starts getting over here, but I think pushing a little bit of that warm color into the fabric would still work and look nice. We can definitely get some of it affecting the skin as well. Maybe a bit under the jaw and connecting to the neck. Now the raised arm is probably going to be blocking some of that light, so I don't think you'd really see this warm tone hitting this back sleeve here. But it could be interesting to try and show that cast shadow of the arm between the fire and the chest. Maybe there could be a rather hard edge here. And we start to see that warmer light ever so subtly influencing the front plane of the chest. So we can accomplish a lot with linear dodge here, from making an interesting and vibrant spell effect to adding the light from that spell effect onto our character. And then if you need to, you can always go back in and paint by hand if you need to fine tune things, adjust the colors, or tighten up the values a little bit. Overall, great work here, Nicole. I hope you had fun and keep experimenting with blending modes. Thank you all so much for submitting such great assignments. It's really exciting looking through these and I hope you're having fun with them and feel like you're getting a good grasp on blending modes and all the cool ways that you can use them in your paintings. All right, guys, now head over to proka.com slash digital painting to see all the other free and premium lessons we currently have out for the course. 
and add the course to your classroom to get notifications anytime a new lesson comes out. 